My name is Josh Whalen and I'm a strategic account director at Craft. My responsibilities as a strategic account director is to work with uh, some of our biggest clients, typically the ones that have a portfolio of offices. So they typically have office locations spanning from the Bay Area all the way to London. And I support um, their efforts and their relationship with Crafty in executing everything that we do for them on site. I think most of my clients um, will always value experience over budget. Of course, there's trade-offs, but we'll always find creative ways to make sure that the experience gets prioritized. And I think we have a couple of different ways of doing that. So a great example right now, um, it's intern season. Um, all of our clients really want to make sure that interns are, you know, their future pipeline of talent coming into their organizations. So they want to make sure that their first impression of doing an internship at their locations is the best as possible, while also not sacrificing the experience for their existing employees. So with a lot of my clients, we'll work on intern programming, making sure that the product mix is right for them on site um, without necessarily having to exceed or go over budget. My clients typically care about spending on snacks and beverages that are going to enhance their overall program. And like I was saying, we look at the scope of their program in its entirety. So some of my clients are really focused on being very health conscious. They know that um, they want to keep their teams kind of fueled throughout the day. So we tend to look at, you know, well, let's have a, an array of products from both fresh produce to, you know, something that might be like a little bit of a decadent treat in the afternoon. But they're very mindful of food being a tool for productivity and not having kind of a, an afternoon slump because everybody has kind of bulked up on candies and chips um, and that we're providing a real balance in the program for folks who might um, follow particular diets, folks who might have allergens, um, their employees who might um, have sensitivities. So there's a lot of different factors that we look at when um, building out a, a client's kind of product list. Um, but they're some of the ones that my clients typically care about. We share a lot of data and insights with the clients. We try to distill that down into um, concise insights as to, uh, in terms of recommendations as to what they should do. I think again, it goes back to that balance of making sure that um, we're meeting their needs. Also knowing their goals is really important. So if their goal is to have a very happy, healthy, workforce, we're going to make sure that we have that balance across the um, across the program. We have some clients who um, operate in like CPG products and manufacturing and they have 24 hour workforces. That's a different type of um, employee or user where you're, you have somebody who's coming into work a night shift and coffee and candy might be more important to them. So I think again, understanding the client's goals and what how their employees are using the program um, is really important. I would say six to seven and I think I have some insights on that um, from you know uh, how we kind of measure and look at that from a client's perspective but I also think of myself coming into the crafty office I'll come in in the morning I might make a coffee have a yogurt have a banana I'm up to three items there uh, lunchtime I might have something like whether it's a bag of chips to go with a sandwich or a sweet treat after in the afternoon I might go and hit up like a hard boiled egg or a cheese string um, for an afternoon snack. So I would say six to seven. For $5 per employee per day, I would really be advising the client to make sure that they're, they make sure they have all of the necessities. So have they got a decent coffee and a decent tea component there? Caffeinated beverages are criti of critical importance in the morning time. Um, so that would be the first thing that I'd look at. I also feel at the $5 per person per day mark, we can look at like what that mid-morning and what that afternoon snack is going to be. Mid-morning, again, can be something that's a little bit more, um, you know, on the, the healthy spectrum, whereas in the afternoon, we can kind of look at something that's a little bit uh, more on kind of the, the candy or decadent area. So for $7.50, I think we can start looking at expanding the variety a little bit with a client. So the priorities are still the same. We've got to make sure our tea and coffee are there in the morning. Um, but I think for that mid-morning and afternoon snack, we can look at having a couple of different items. We might be able to look at introducing some brands that are at like more of a kind of mid-tier price point. Instead of it just being potato chips, maybe you're able to get a potato chip plus a tortilla plus a popcorn. So it opens up the variety a lot more. $10, we're able to really customize a really great program for a client. 
that makes sure that we've still got um, great coffee, great tea. Again, it looks at we can bump up to a different brand there. So maybe you're able to go for more of a kind of local bean that's um, specific to a city or a state. The variety can certainly expand um, as well as kind of the price point that we're looking at. So, you know, very often we hear from or we get suggestions from um, our clients that, you know, an employee saw X item at Whole Foods over the weekend and they really liked that. And what's the potential of bringing that into the office? Um, at that $10 price point, that's the kind of price point where we are able to look at those equivalent like items. We have clients that spend well in excess of the $10 range and that provides a lot of great scope for them. Their variety is really robust. Um, they'll also have a number of different products within each category. So when we think about bars, chips, crackers, yogurt, um, they will offer more than just kind of like one or two options within that. They'll also tend to have a greater like depth of stock as well. So they are typically clients who, um, you know, are in on a very strict kind of three, four days a week. They want to make sure that their employees have a really great office experience, um, that products are not running out, that their fulfillment is really good. Um, so they're kind of key priorities for clients who are in that spend range. I think the clients who are in that spending range um, really value innovation and rotation of products. Um, so they really like to see, you know, the example of somebody who saw an item in Whole Foods or, you know, uh, a different food store. They really like to see that being able to be incorporated instead of just kind of the very mainstream, you know, generic kind of CPG brands. They also tend to be, I would say, trailblazers within their field, whether it's consulting, whether it is fintech. Um, they really have their kind of finger on the pulse of their own industry and they expect us to do the same um, for the price point that they're paying. There's a couple of differences. I think that you will see a lot more um, in, in a kind of smaller budget here in that five, seven fifty range, you're going to see a lot of consistency. Um, so the budget is somewhat easier to manage in that sense. Whereas in the higher range, because we are swapping out products, we're rotating things in more often and more frequently, you do see a lot of um, spikes there. That client in that kind of spend range is also um, aware of that and you know they will typically approve for us to have that, that spike. But yeah, we'll see a lot more um, fluctuation in the higher budget range. The budget definitely differs between kind of large metropolitan cities. And I think there's a, a number of different factors that come into play. Like in our client hub sites like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, they're very often the offices that are hosting uh, team offsites, they're hosting uh, customer roadshows. So the budget typically is just greater to be able to facilitate those different types of events and added footfall that will come through the office. In the smaller offices, I think we're able to curate a really nice package for them so they're not getting the same experience, they're not getting the same product set that they would have in New York City, for example, um, but we're still able to pull together a really nice program for them. Tea and coffee. Um, it's very often how so many of us start our day, whether you're a breakfast eater or a non-breakfast eater, Typically, most employees will have some type of cup of coffee or um, tea in the morning. And very often we find that um, that's where we're able to make the most impact um, on getting somebody off to a good start in their day. So if we have that scenario where a client is trending um, above what their budget is going to allow for early on in the month, that's where the luxury of the Crafty platform kicks in very easily I'm able to log in and distinguish what is the what are the drivers of that spend. And then it's really about having a conversation with the client um, about, hey, what would you like us to do to make sure, you know, the rest of the month goes smoothly. I think that finding and having those insights and being able to share that data with the client generally leads them to say, okay, let's um, continue with business as usual. I really appreciate having that insight. I'll make my team aware of it. Or it might be in the sense that, um, hey, we knew this was gonna happen. We had um, a bunch of interviews on site last week. It's fine, continue to spend as we need to. In some cases, it is a case of, we can't exceed our budget this month, so what can we do? And in that instance, we're looking at creative ways of how can we um, reduce orders between now and the end of the month? How can we be creative with the product set? Is there something that we could temporarily pause? So we have a number of different levers that we can 
pull there to make sure that the experience doesn't suffer but that the client's budget is still um, withheld. So we have a couple of different things that we can look at. One is Operationally, we can just look at how many products there are within the product set. If it's a client site where they have a lot of variety and a lot of different SKUs, we'll look at, well, can we you know, pause a couple of SKUs for between now and the end of the month? We do look at merchandising, which is a really important component um, as well. So we wanna make sure that we're not putting in you know, baskets or containers that give off the impression that they always have to be full. So we're looking at creative ways um, to merchandise uh, pantries and snack rooms to make sure that it's visually appealing, but it's also not setting us up to be unsuccessful. Yes, I would say when we come back from Christmas um, in the new year, uh, typically we find that those items that are on kind of the healthier end of the client's product list. So we see lots of requests for protein driven products, whether it's a protein bar, you know, more healthy produce coming in. So we typically start talking about the following year's budgets in around September, October of the year previous. Um, knowing that you know January is going, January February are going to be heavy on healthy products. The summertime is going to increase our beverage consumption. Interns, we know all of those different peaks from the data and the information that we've collected. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're constantly um, reiterating that to the client. We love clients who are strict on budget um, because strict on budget means that we can be very firm with our processes, how we implement things, our standards. The merchandising element really comes into play there. Um, we can look at creative ways that, you know, coolers can be really big and require a lot of stock to be filled, but we can look at, well, we can merchandise this fridge to 75% or 50% by just pulling everything forward. There's little kind of cheats and tricks that we can do there. Baskets, displays are really important there in making sure that the um, pantry or the snack room looks great. So that's where we'll really work with the client on making sure that their small wares are appropriate to the budget that they've got for snacks. It's a conversation where we look at the headcount, we look at um, what, their, what their current budget is, what their product set is for that headcount, and really um, asking for their feedback on like, what are the pain points that they're seeing with their pantry program at that point in time? Is it that the, the time of day is wrong for the refills? Is it that there's just too many people now using the program when we need to look at different items? There's lots of different things that go into kind of resetting the expectations, but we're pretty adept at that. Um, we're able to turn some creative solutions around. I think the sweet spot right now, um, you know, thinking of um, the program that I get to enjoy every day at Crafty, the insights that I hear from clients about what their employees enjoy, and the data that we have access to, that $750 to $10 price range is really the sweet spot. I think employees have really high expectations these days for if, they're, um, if their place of work offers a food program. I think employers are very well aware of those expectations, so um, aligning to that is really important for them. Extremely valuable, uh, not just for, for me, but also for my clients. It definitely makes my job a lot easier. I use it on a daily basis to you know keep track of our clients' um, spend and budget. Um, they really trust and empower us to be responsible with their funds and make sure that you know we're a responsible business partner, but that we're also bringing the best possible program to their locations. I'm looking at it for a couple of things. Obviously, I'm looking to see you know how their spend is trending throughout the month. But I'm also looking to see um, insights. For example, this time of year, we know beverage consumption really soars. Um, and beverages is a great category for me to make recommendations to clients that if they don't want to exceed their spend, hey, can we swap out an item or two here? We know that you know, if you look at the market, there's so many different varieties and brands of flavored waters still in sparkling. We can rotate those in and out relatively seamlessly. Um, and that's also a, a great way for us to manage the client's budget.